Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. This week on the show, we've seen entertainment on land, but what about in water? That's right. This week, we're talking to the entertainers at SeaWorld. Bringing together a new and exciting slate of shows, these performances will feature fish, people, and the magic that exists between the two. These staff members are creators, choreographers, fish handlers, and most importantly, artists. Now, we know SeaWorld has run into some issues in the past, but they are looking towards the future and the present today. We are moving past the issues. Let's listen in. Boop, boop, eyes up here, guys. Boop, boop, eyes up here. Boop, 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 boop. Eyes up, up here, guys. Up, sit, eyes shake. up here. Up, 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 oh, sit, I'm looking. shake. Eyes up I'm here. Looking. Up, up, eyes up sit, here, guys. Shake. Shake. Right, looking. Gonna, we're going to go ahead and start recording in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. How are you guys? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you guys here in this uh, podcast studio. Uh, usually we see each other around SeaWorld, um, and this is a nice change of pace. Mm. So I think uh, what we should do, um, so I think what we should do right now is go around and introduce ourselves to the lovely podcast listeners. Everybody say hi, podcast listeners. Hi, hi podcast, podcast listeners. listeners. I can't hear you. Come on. Let them know that you're here. Hi, podcast listeners. Hi, Hi, podcast, podcast listeners. listeners. That's great. Okay, so let's go around and introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Melody St. Harmony, and I run the Working Hard with the Sea Lions show. And uh, I, of course, am really excited to be here. I'm having a blast. I, of course, brought my favorite sea lion. His name is Edgar. Everyone say, Hi, Edgar. Hi, Hi Edgar. Edgar. I did bring a full sea line into this podcasting studio, and I'm so happy to oh, have him. Oh, oh, <laughs> Edgar, oh, oh, oh. Edgar, I guess he has some opinions as well. Hey, Edgar. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Edgar, what, what do you think about toxic masculinity? Oh, oh, oh. That's right. We have a whole <laughs> joke. We have a whole bit show. Uh, on the show, we have a whole bit where he pretends to be Joe Rogan on a podcast. So he's very well acquainted with the microphone. Well, howdy, everybody. How about you say hi, buddy? Hi, hi buddy. buddy. <laughs> hi, everybody. My name is Buddy Robinson. I have been on this SeaWorld team uh, since the opening. My God, why don't you? People say I'm a bit of a playboy, but I think of it more as I'm hitting play on Boy, that was a good show. Can I get a high five from my friend? <laughs> And there we go, buddy. Here, how about you have a sardine, why don't you? Oh, you guys, I'm so excited to talk about these new slate of shows. I've taken kind of a backseat creatively and just sat back and enjoyed the ride. So I am so excited to get back out there and get down to talking those darn fish, why don't you? <laughs> hey, y'all. Can I get a hey, y'all? Hey, hey y'all! <laughs> oh, where'd that fish go? Up! Up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that one more time, one more confident. Where'd that fish go? Up! up. Yeah, fish that's go awesome. Up. <laughs> hey guys! I can't I... wait for people to see this show. <laughs> this is freaking awesome. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Sandy Magnesium, but we call me Geronimo here. <laughs> yep, we yes, don't call Geronimo her Sandy Magnesium. Short. I'm Sandy Geronimo Magnesium, but my nickname is Geronimo for short. <laughs> And I'm one of our main trainers here that does stunts with our fishes and whales today. Where did that fish go? Up! Uh, oh, I'm so excited to be here today, you guys. Love you all. Sandy, hey, of course, oh. Sandy, of course, is in charge of our fish-defying gravity show, where we have all sorts of animals coming from all sorts of different types of directions. And it's really fun, and it's really exciting, and I can't wait to talk about the rigging specifically for that show. It's insane because she has figured out, Geronimo here has figured out a specific way to actually train fish to jump. Uh, it's kind of the first for us, and we're excited to get to it in our new slate. Um, but fish usually don't jump. It's usually we use the mammalian uh, species. They are smart enough. She has somehow figured out to make fish go up. Um, no, it's one those of the... sardines can friggin' jump, let me tell you. I've never seen a sardine them. jump like that. That's right, buddy. 
She gets about a thousand sardines to jump at once. It is <laughs> um awe. It's awe inspiring. It's awesome. Hey and guys, can I say oh, it, uh, fearful. I am fearful. Yes. Oh guys, what do you say when all those thousands and thousands of sardines go up? Uh, what <laughs> what wait, do we what say? We say what do we go say? Up or, we say up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what we say. I can't quite remember. We're what still do we the say? First, we're still on the first draft of the call and responses for Sandy's show. So we're going to maybe be working chopping that a little bit here. Sandy was always better at training the fish more than training the humans. One can say I'm basically thrown off the deep end. Geronimo! So that's what she says, not what we say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going over all of this stuff soon. But before we go over that, I would love to introduce myself. My name is John Cross. Uh, you guys can call me Cross for short. And I am the lead trainer of the dolphins here at SeaWorld. I kind of am in the water and I am doing the tricks and flips with all the dolphins for our stunt shows and for our fun shows. Uh, so everybody say, hi, Cross. Hi, hi Cross. Cross. And as in tradition, just like uh, we brought the, <laughs> the giant elephant seal, I have brought one dolphin here to say hi. Can you say hi, Miriam? <laughs> so high-pitched we could barely hear her. That is Miriam the dolphin, our oldest dolphin. She is 84, um, and she is a wonderful, wonderful dolphin. Cannot wait for you guys to get to know her soon. I forgot, I forgot to make my sardines say Geronimo. Hey, sardines, um, what's my name? Awesome. Exactly. Well, how really I haunting, I gotta say. <laughs> you sort of hear it on a subliminal level. It comes from below. Yes, that was the noise of a, a thousand sardines <laughs> jumping out of the water at once. And Zoom sort of muted it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zoom for me, put it underwater, and it was fun. So we're having well, a lot guys. of fun at SeaWorld San Diego. We're having a really good time and we're really excited for you guys to come out and see our brand new shows. Um, maybe we should go around and talk about how we got involved with such a wonderful, transparent, honest organization that is truly <laughs> a great place to be involved. SeaWorld is about family. It's about values. It's about fun. And those are the three things. But it's also about education. And what we want to educate you on is how to be a moral person in the yes. water. Correct. Geronimo! And that's why we're so excited that this next slate of shows is all centered around morality tales. <laughs> there is a lesson that you learn at the end of each one, no matter what it is. And I'm very excited because I think we could all use some help to tell him from right from wrong. Mm -hmm. We've got I, can say, I can say on behalf of this team, <laughs> myself, Geronimo, Cross, and Melody St. Harmony, we have been ushered by the old guard, Buddy Robinson, who is a legend, a legend in the SeaWorld space. And we are all coming together as a new creative team to bring in the future. Oh, stop. Well, stop. I guess I could talk about answer that question, why don't I, about how, how I got into this thing. <laughs> well, it was the 60s, and SeaWorld was a little different back then. It was a little bit swinging, it's a little bit rocking, and there were well, not quite so many rules in place about who you could and couldn't date. I know this time they say, hey, Co-workers, try not to date each other, especially not in front of the fish. It spooks them. But back then, <laughs> it was the 60s and anything went. And it did. I got into this because I followed a young lady named Serafina in here. She was a, uh, a, a dolphin trainer. And uh, I didn't have a place to be during there, so I would follow her to work. Um, and, uh, well, with invitation, of course. And I thought, and she was hanging out with these dolphins, and I thought, you know what? That sounds like a pretty sweet gig. And I charmed those dolphins. They took to me right away. They were obsessed with me. I couldn't keep them away. One of the scientists was saying it was something to do with the relaxing nature of my voice. The dolphins can't get enough of me. And so I was a natural fit. And uh, Serafina and I broke up. She moved to Wisconsin, but I stuck around right here in sunny San Diego. Mm. She does the lake shows, right? Up in one of the big lakes. Yeah, up in Tahoe, she's doing lake shows with some bass. They're trying to get that off the ground. Yeah, she's Those doing lake. Those shows are too dirty for me. 
Lake Universe, right? I believe they're called Lake Universe. I get a lot of emails from them and reach outs on LinkedIn for Lake Universe, not SeaWorld. Not us, though. They don't have the large mammalia we are interested in. <laughs> so they not. are trying to poach, but it's not going to work. Morale people, here is yeah. too good. People they're trying, don't know that yeah. we are contracted out. That's correct. And they're trying to say that Sturgeon can do backflips. And I don't think that's true. And I'm certainly not going to be the one to fix that. <laughs> um, I, can, I, I guess I can tell you guys my story. Uh, Melody St. Harmony. I started, um, of course, um, in a, a Christian university. I was going to be a youth pastor. And I was really excited. Young life has been really important to me. And my energy is when I when I was 12 years old, I was told, you really should run some sort of youth pastor program. You should be Young Life. I was told that by a youth pastor. And I said, that's really interesting. I just kind of always had that energy. And I would do lock-ins with my friends just for fun. You know, instead of instead of just sleepovers, we would do lock-ins. And I would bring my friends and my, my parents would lock us in the house. And they'd leave for the weekend. They'd go to Vegas or wherever. We lived in Reno, so it was close for them to travel. And we would spend the whole weekend and we'd make games. We'd put on little fake mustaches and pretend to be reporters and stuff like that. We did a lot of really fun games. And... Uh, I quickly found out that uh, after uh, my youth pastor program at my college, I was unable to be a youth pastor uh, because I didn't like God anymore. I had an experience and it changed for me. But I had the energy and I realized, wow, where can I take this energy? It's with the sea lions, at fixing things with the sea lions, at SeaWorld. And I realized that sea lions and elephant seals and, and seals are really great environment to talk about yourself and to get things out because they're so supportive just like edgar here edgar's heard all of the worst things that i've ever experienced Arr, arr. that's right edgar <laughs> don't tell them everything <laughs> but really, but really edgar, melody you and your your bond with edgar is so transparent even off off um screen and off the stage you guys have such a connection and i i i really value that Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Sandy. I, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, I, I am really, really, really grateful to be here with this crowd. I think I think all of us are together. Whether I hang out with you guys at a happy hour or I see you guys at the park, it, it just feels like a really wonderful experience. And can I give you a compliment, Melody? You I would love it, buddy. You send the longest emails. Really, <laughs> I the certainly longest do. emails I've ever seen. I didn't I work know an email could be that long. I work really hard on them, and, and I'm really glad to know that you like those because, and, and you know, I always put something at the very end. If you read this whole thing, please respond in the subject with, um, it's going down, we're yelling timber, or some sort of other Kesha lyric or something fun. Um, <laughs> just so I know you've read them. And I think it's fun that I do that. Yeah, I think it's fun. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. It definitely <laughs> doesn't feel like we're being held hostage in any way. It's definitely no. a fun thing. It's not a threat. No one is held hostage with love. That's not hostage. That's being uh, presented with a plot, a positive experience. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess I'll go. Uh, so my name is John Cross. Uh, I kind of <laughs> fell into this. I was the child actor in Free Willy, and I loved uh, the whale so much. Uh, after a couple of years in Hollywood that <laughs> I'd rather not get into, uh, I I uh, found myself at a Sea World going. I should get into this. This was my first love. So now, full circle moment. I work at Sea World with a lot of the dolphins, sometimes the whales, and uh, make things happen in a fun and festive way. I love people, I love my animals, and I love the fun that SeaWorld brings. Uh, the messages that SeaWorld puts out, and the f possibilities are endless. You know, I also wanted to mention, John, it was incredible that you were the boy in Free Willy. That was so inspiring for me. Um, all, uh, constantly watching that when I was growing up, I knew every single line and more than that, I, I could recite the moment where the whale went over your head almost almost verbatim. You know, oh, I knew every you. single yeah. thing that happened. And I know Keiko was the name of the whale uh -huh, in Free yes. Willy. Did you guys keep in touch? No. So ac actually what happened there was accidentally we did free that whale. That one shot. We got a oh. one shot. The whale cleared the situation and then left. Um, and I was heartbroken. I was absolutely heartbroken. It was one of my best friends at the time. 
Growing up in Hollywood as a child actor, you don't actually make a ton of friends. <laughs> so the <laughs> whale ended up being one of the closest friends I had, and then he left me. And things kind of just spiraled from there, which I will not, I would love to ignore. I would love to not get into. Um, so that is actually how I ended up at SeaWorld. A little bit of me wants to keep these things a little bit more inside and not let accidents like Free Willy happen again. <laughs> Absolutely incredible inspiration, Mr. Cross. Um, I'm so excited to be around you guys. Um, I'm the youngin. I joined um, a couple years after Melody and John. Um, I have been so, so blessed to join this beautiful team of artists and athletes. I grew up in Central Wyoming. Athletes! Yeah. Yes, I call I'm glad athletes. someone finally called. I'll tell you what, that's the first time I've been called an athlete. <laughs> oh, buddy, you are too modest. Um, speaking of athletes, I was a swimmer and a diver um, in high school and went to college for diving, competitive diving. Didn't quite make it there, um, but found my way to the beautiful sea world and started working with the fish and working with the dolphins and working with everybody there. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm less animal driven, more athletics driven, but we're going to find a way to handle that and climb up, up, the up, up. You know, it's so nice to hear that you're from Wyoming. That explains why you're using Geronimo so casually. <laughs> That's great to know. Geronimo! <laughs> great. Yeah, but it's just been so exciting. I think, Melody, you were the one that started training me. Um, and it's just been, like, absolutely incredible to have you guys. Like, just just such a – people don't realize here that even though we're a work – like, we are, like, work friends, we also are a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're really it, a family. The SeaWorld fan. They talk about it. They call it the SeaWorld family, which I think is just so fun and unique. It's so um, fun. <laughs> they actually bring you in when you be when you become part of the SeaWorld family, they assign you kind of like the sorting hat. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter currently and politically as well. <laughs> I um <laughs> I'll probably cut that. Uh <laughs> and, and they actually bring you in and it's kind of like the sorting hat. Like a little like Harry Potter, they tell you what type of person in the family you are so i came in and i was a daughter slash niece and i'm so happy to be that for everybody here yes just to go over you'd think that the sorting hat would <laughs> sort you into you're working with dolphins you're working with whales <laughs> no the sorting no, hat kind of chooses you how you are in this family not yes. the um, case yeah it was so exciting when the sorting hat decided that i am a third removed cousin <laughs> i thought that was a surprise but it made a lot of sense when when she started clicking with the family Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got <laughs> uncle every single time. Yeah. <laughs> and you tried, tried a bunch of times. I tried to lower and raise my blood pressure sometimes to throw off the scent of the hat, <laughs> but it kept smelling uncle no matter what the hell I did. And what were you going for, buddy? What did you want? Well, I wanted to be daddy. <laughs> I always wanted a kid. Of course you wanted to be daddy, buddy. I just want to be daddy. My biggest dream is to be a daddy someday. And I got to say, time is running out. I am, uh, oh, what is it now? 66 years old. And uh, though I do all right with the ladies, nobody wants to be the mommy of the kid that'll call me daddy. Oh. <laughs> you could say that again. <laughs> nobody say it wants again. to be the mommy of the kid that'll call me daddy. <laughs> okay, one more time just for the seal, just for Edgar. <laughs> okay, Edgar, are you listening? Nobody oh. wants to be the mommy to the kid that'll call me daddy. It felt oh. like Edgar spoke on top of you. And just for cleanliness, this is a podcast. Can we yeah. get clean? Edgar, yeah, ab <laughs> absolutely no problem. Nobody wants to be the mommy to the kid that'll call me daddy. <laughs> Did we get it? I think we got it! Yay! Yay! And for, and for reference, I always get older, removed half-brother. Let's move on to the shows that we're doing on our slate this year. We are so excited. It is, like we said, it's all based on morality. So we have some of the hottest shows, and I'm so excited. One of my favorite shows coming out is An Eye for an Eye Makes the Whole World Fish. And <laughs> uh, that one is so cute. It is a beautiful, beautiful show start to finish. And such a great lesson for the kiddos. It's <laughs> such a good lesson. We talked about it. It's morality. It's beautiful. <laughs> we get some big bass and some small tuna and put them in sort of an arena to teach the kids that war is bad. <laughs> Every one of our stages you can kind of describe as sort of an arena. 
<laughs> and we put them in uh, bumper balls, which are those things where you can get inside them and they're foam balls. And because we don't want the tuna or the bass to get hurt. No. But we wrap no. them up a little bit and we push them towards each other. Yeah, so it's so kind by of a game of bumper cars. Water filled bumper balls with about uh, 200 fish each. They're destined to not get hurt. <laughs> the Correct. kids love it. Some people have said our arenas kind of look like Hunger Games sets, and they are kind of Hunger Games sets, but and yeah. they're that, not. I say we were first. <laughs> yeah, we were like that. Well, we're competing. We're competing with all these newfangled movies right now. We are wi trying to win the war of attention against <laughs> Marvel movies, against TikTok, against YouTube videos. We have to keep the kids' attention, and sometimes you can only do that with biblical fire and flame. <laughs> and it is well known, actually, and you can look this up. It's on the Wikipedia. Suzanne Collins, who wrote The Hunger Games, actually was, we used to call her a sea rat, and she used to come all the time. She used to come all the time to the Sea World in San Diego, and she used to sit on uh, uh, the stands, and she used to write during all the orca encounters. She would write notes about the layouts, mm -hmm. and we were actually told by the higher-ups, we know that that woman is trying to steal our ideas, so if you can push the orcas to extend the splash zone so that we can get the notebooks wet so that you can't take any of the ideas <laughs> home, that would be great. So and we that were, took yes. weeks. That took weeks remember, to figure out. There was one time where they asked me to dive quite literally to the edge of the pool <laughs> in the arena so I can create a big enough splash. And you better believe it, I yelled, Geronimo! You certainly and did. We, we went that moleskin to completion. We did. And, and, and we actually were trying to get you, um, uh, obviously, we were trying to get you, Sandy, to use the orcas to get the splash. But we love that you tried to get the splash as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. So... So, so we have a lot of really fun shows. I'm obviously, I'm doing, uh, working hard with the sea lions and working hard with the elephant seals. And, uh, it has been so fun. I get to wear these big, funny overalls. And of course they come in and they, and they throw some stuff around. We act like we're fixing a house. And the moral <laughs> is a house is not a home unless it's with people you love. So we really tried to build the relationship that we make things, we screw things up. Maybe sometimes an otter will knock over a can that'll send a two by four flying through the air. But at the end of the day, if you're with the people you love and of course you're pure of heart, then it doesn't matter where you live. And yes. so it's really nice. I mean, these shows also, you guys need to understand, there's a little bit of thrill because they aren't without their hiccups. I mean, talking about messes up. But I, I heard uh, your uh, elephant seal just threw a hammer at your head the last show. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, that was Dottie. Dottie threw a hammer at my head. It's going viral, right? It's going viral, yeah. It's going viral <laughs> all over the internet right now. It's really crazy. And I've never had something go viral before. And I'm, I'm getting DMs all over the place. And it's very interesting. I'm, it's so hard to respond to all of them. And send so many pictures. They're all asking for pictures, and then I'm sending so many pictures. I'm so tired. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, so the um, Dottie threw a hammer at my head, and <laughs> it, of course, hit me in the head, and I fell into the water, and uh, the otter then knocked over a tarp, and that uh, wrapped me up, and I kind of ended up uh, waterboarding myself a little bit, and that was a little difficult. And it was okay at the end of the day. We had a conversation, and I talked to them. I talked to the animals, and I sent them an email, of course, and I said, we can't really do this again, guys. This isn't the teamwork. So, mm -hmm. so we're figuring it out. And Edgar, I think I got through to you, right? Edgar, you kind of understand we can't do that again. <laughs> oh, Zoom did that it's thing so again where I put Edgar underwater. But you know what? Well, we won't hear that because he's recording locally, but what I will tell you... <laughs> What I will tell you is that um, uh, when Edgar makes that noise, it does deeply unsettle me. And <laughs> I know that something something malicious is involved in that. But we're going to talk about that off off, off the mic. Let's get back right into our I new slate. I have almost accidentally waterboarded myself as well. And it's a part of our new <laughs> slate where I have all the fishes. We do the five love language and the five attachment styles. Yes. yes. We are trying to teach All everybody. about morality. <laughs> <laughs> And I, 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 this is actually a good time to talk about this, that we're unveiling, they, they actually gave us the ability to unveil the fifth attachment style. From what I knew, <laughs> there were only four. It's fish. It's fish. <laughs> it's fish. fish. You, of it's course, fish. have, you have well, uh, anxious you avoidant. Have, it's actually two because you have an anxious fish and secure fish. <laughs> <laughs> Are there only two? So there's six. 
Yeah, so now there's anxious, there's avoidant, there's secure, and there's anxious avoidant, and now it's anxious fish and, and fish. secure fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not yeah. avoidant fish. A fish don't do that. A no. fish, no. Is, don't avoid. fish inherently are avoidant, so but they are not purposely avoidant. You no, know, but so that's we're a doing difference. that a part of, it's a beautiful show, and it's all based within Brene Brown's Atlas of the World. That is the song that is playing. It's um, a song, yeah. it is her doing her spoken word, her yeah. reading her book, Atlas of the World, and that we got, is we, with, it's actually an incredible collab. Brene Brown and Fred again got together for this SeaWorld exclusive. And believe it or not, it's a night show. It's so we get to- <laughs> Brene Brown, ex- uh, Fred again, X fish And it is unbelievable at night. We paint each fish with a beautiful glow-in-the-dark color. So, <laughs> so these fish pop. In the, they are not naturally bioluminescent, but for this show, they are. And not you toxic be- paint. <laughs> Man, I'll and- never get how you get fish to stick to a paint. I can't believe that. <laughs> Buddy, say that again. <laughs> I'll never get how you get fish to stick to a paint. I'll never get it. Well, Buddy, rather we're getting paint sticking to fish. And that's an interesting thing. It's and a little that easier. blows my mind even more. <laughs> and the best part of the whole thing is that the last bit of our show, the five attachment styles and the five love languages, the show ends and it brings us straight into the safe for fish fireworks. And it is all about love yourself and love others. Yes. So we are imploding fireworks underwater that are yes. completely safe for fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and it mirrors the sky. <laughs> So when you're walking to your car in the parking lot, you can see how much you should love yourself so you can love others. Mm-hmm. It's and beautiful. It's a wonderful show. And it teaches you all about the five love languages and connection styles. Um, we are we, so proud of it. We really, really, really want you guys to come back to SeaWorld and have a good time with us. We've changed everything up. We're morally good. Mm-hmm. And we really think you'd have a good time with us. And tickets are really, really cheap right now. Uh, they're $5. Really $5 for everyone. And if you bring a Coke... A uh, Coke can, and you turn it in. We actually give you twenty dollars. <laughs> so yeah. we would love for you. It's absolutely we would love incredible. for you to come. Mm-hmm. Bring yeah. five. Bring five Coke cans during Christmas, and we'll give you a down payment on a home. Mm-hmm. Yes, we'll give you a full yes. down payment. I don't really get the corporate strategy on that, but hey, not my clown, not my circus. Yeah, certainly. All, all I can say is you got to come check out me and the Dolphins. Me and the Dolphins, we're going at 2, 3, 20, and 5, and we are doing a Faustian bargain-themed show. Where, yes. uh, so we have three Dolphin siblings. One is offered unlimited money, one is offered eternal life, and the other is offered nothing at all except the chance to be a good person. And uh, <laughs> let's just say we'll see how things turn out for Dolphins number one and two. <laughs> but we and try and keep it light. We try and keep it fun. We try and get a lot of comedy in there. And, and you can absolutely. catch Buddy's show at 2, 320, 320 and, and 5. five. <laughs> one thing you have to know, too, is that the audience is really important because the audience gets to decide which dolphin um, gets the devil's wish. So you have to vote, and, and we use our audience re- interaction, and, and you're, you're kind of a character. You are a character. You're kind of playing the devil in this game, which is super fun and so unique. You know, you get a feel. It's really fun for the kiddos. It's really fun for the kiddos. It really really poses the question, what if you were the devil? And what Mm -hmm. if you had the power to Mm -hmm. cause pain or inflict it? I mean, we have gotten some complaints about, yes, this maybe is too true of a metaphor. People showing up to SeaWorld asking for the dolphins to do things specifically, acting like the devil, is too on the nose. But to that I say, you have yet to see the show. You have yet to be a part of the fun. And And you got to meet these dolphins, man. They're a lot of fun. They They are so much fun. And you can't be too on the nose with a dolphin because their noses are very big. So what's (laughs) on the nose for us is barely on the nose for a dolphin. Truly, a whole family. That's is on so the true, nose. Melody. Isn't That's that so an true. interesting thing to think about? Mm-hmm. And we, this slate that we are approaching, really, we've touched it before, but we are trying to move past and learn from our mistakes in the past. We and are. That is why we have the new Shamu show, Shamu Still Learning. It is a wonderful show. <laughs> an All, apology tour. It's an apology sh- tour <laughs> for Shamu, and we are we are because it, it was Shamu's fault. It, yeah, is the well, stance we're taking. And Shamu, here's what we do. This is the yeah. The show is Shamu taking a stand and publicly apologizing. Finally, well, and here's what we do: with Shamu gets to Shamu gets the floor, and then we listen. So the animal trainers, we all get on. Um, uh, we sit down, we kneel, and we listen. And all that's all we're doing is we're listening. 
This is and the one thing with, show, by the way. We're all in this. Yeah, we're all and in this. What's absolutely incredible is that so we can feel what it's like to be in the fish's shoes. We are in full fish gear. They, um, we feel the weight of the water and the fish flippers by putting on heavy prosthetics. And just to show how sorry we are, you guys get to splash us. So we leave buckets of water <laughs> under the seat, and you get to throw water at us. Water and, and sardines. You guys yes. got to whip us with these things. Um, <laughs> and I, I'll let you guys know with the test audience, some kids are into baseball. It's they can the whip Marina a fish. It's kind of the Marina Abramovic uh, <laughs> performance art where yeah, she truly. lines up a bunch of things and lets you do things to her. Uh, yeah. So yeah. we've taken a lot of inspiration from her. And the trainers the show, are present. Yes, and though the show has not been open for very long, the reactions and the responses we are seeing are truly healing and cathartic. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's absolutely incredible that we are healing past generations of white of what might not have been a good um, a a good company. And yeah. I and I and I think all four of us are sitting down. We're doing press finally. They've never let us do press, and I think it's finally because we are an open door company, right? Mm -hmm. We are a we and we're having these conversations and we're talking about these difficult topics because we are not scared. And um, the conversation usually goes, um, "Are you going to free the big mammals?" And we say, "No." And that yeah. is the end of the conversation. We say, "Shut up!" up. <laughs> and and what I would say too is, I love as an employee who's only really been here five years being the face of the punishment. I think it's really <laughs> nice, and I really like diving in pun intended, head on into the shitstorm that the bosses and the executives that haven't changed are responsible for. It's yeah. really fun for me to be the face of it, and I'm enjoying it, and, and I, I know that fun. they see it, and, they, and I know that they're going to reward me in the future. It reminds mm -hmm. me of movies when the loved one takes a bullet for his other loved one, because exactly. we don't work for our bosses. We work for the fish. Like, th that is my boss. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, well, that yeah. <laughs> we definitely work for the fish. I love those guys. Those are my boys right there. And I tell you, they are some salty dogs. We cannot let go of the bond that we have with the fish. I tell well, you, some of the things these dolphins whisper to me, they are crass, they are rude, and they are not to be repeated on air. Okay, give us one. I know Come you on. have your drinking dolphins that you guys, you play your craps and you, you, drink, your, you drink your drinks with the dolphins. What do they say? get invited to that. Buddy I really want to be invited. This space. Yeah, Buddy creates this space for the older dolphins um, to feel really comfortable <laughs> in saying whatever they want. Yeah, well, you know, those dolphins have been around for a while. They're dogs. They don't have a filter anymore. They just want to hang with their boys. They need a guy's space to be free to talk about it. You know, one dolphin told me the dirtiest joke the other day. He said, uh -oh. so a, a wife walks into an ocean bar <laughs> and she says, I don't know how big my husband's nose is. And she goes to a, uh, a a rabbi dolphin, a priest dolphin, and a doctor dolphin. And uh, th then he, he asks, she asks her the question. Uh, and then and then the priest dolphin says, um, well, well, what about, w have you been to the bedroom? And then the dolphin, you know, this joke goes on forever. Oh, and I buddy. can't remember it's, the punchline. It's really dirty, but only for dolphins. <laughs> I was going to say, it does feel like it's getting a little lost in trans. Translation. I know you're translating it from dolphin. So. No, it yeah. was so funny when the dolphin told it. No, I remember the punchline. I just don't remember how we got there. He says, well, honey, if you were looking in the mirror, you'd know it's a hole. <laughs> I don't remember. There's a crucial middle part that I'm missing. Absolutely. But when the dolphin you, told it, it was so you funny kinda to me. me. You kind of lost me as a wife goes into a bar. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> really, that part to didn't me, work. It that could was happen. a weird translation. No. I think <laughs> it could happen. John, wives can go to bars now. I know it's just <laughs> funny to talk to say that they're a wife, not a woman or anything. It's just a wife, straight to. Anyway, uh, you <laughs> listen, guys go. listen. These are my boys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, I just wanted to mention too. You know, we talk a lot about the shows, but um, Sea World. But also, let me grab the notes. Do will also let me want me to let you know that there are seven roller coasters as well that are very fun and you should mm -hmm. check out the roller coasters. Boo. I don't really I don't really like the roller coasters. None of us here really like the roller coasters. I just we don't kind of, get it. I just we dunk on the roller coasters it. all the time. I don't get it. That's not what you know, it doesn't combine for me. Um mm -hmm. doesn't create a show, you know, but 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 but, but it's it's fine. 
you know, I I have some complaints. The roller coasters rile up a lot of the animals, for one. Yes. I mean, it is so tough to do a show, and then a roller coaster comes about 20 feet from your, your <laughs> shelter, and the animals get spooked and immediately start, you know, acting like wild animals. Because this is the thing. Even though they are in captivity and raised in captivity, they are still wild animals you know these are not domesticated animals so having the uh, wave tycoon sprint right by your head while you're dealing with a giant whale or a couple of orcas it's scary it's traumatizing um and it can I mean, go it, south quickly yeah and i i feel like they've made a they made a decision right they kind of were they, they were choosing they could either side with us with the animal trainers or they could side with the roller coaster enthusiasts and let's just say there was uh a roller coaster that was built, and because it was built, we could no longer do the Manatee Opera. And I think that's very sad. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to miss the Manatee Opera a lot. Those I'm guys were so much. really I'm good. Miss it. You know, part of the reason was the roller coaster. Part of the reason was that they're an extremely endangered animal, and we had to return them to Florida. But yeah, they most of, but these manatees were so good at singing. I yeah. mean, yeah. it was amazing. I'm gonna miss the Christmas show where we had them sing Christmas carols. Uh, they when sing. they they sing the Christmas version of "Wish Wish You Well," it was so <laughs> good. And I'm gonna miss the ones that learned how to smoke cigarettes. Those guys uh, were fun. Of course you will, buddy. <laughs> but we should say what our new Christmas show is. That is. Oh plays. yeah. It, it oh yeah. Is octopuses octopi making a movie it is so fun <laughs> so it's really high concept it's, it's so high concept and it's for christmas and you're probably wondering what makes it christmas well yeah. it's a christmas movie That's yes. and the octopus is santa mm -hmm. and we let them write it let's, let's be honest we let them write it and they're gonna do their thing and they don't take notes very well so we're gonna let them do what they want to the do. octopus that was uh Predicting the World Cup, we have a bunch of octopus in different cages, and they kind of choose green or red to choose a word or a noun or an idea. And through that, we write a script. Then we get them all dressed up in their cute Christmas outfits. We're putting felt. We're putting cotton. We're putting a lot of clothing on these octopus, and we watch them make this movie. Absolutely incredible. Okay. Nope. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Now, I got a question. A lot of our job involves uh, performing, you know, talking to the audience. Have you guys ever had something in a show go horribly wrong? Have you? And how do you oh, deal goodness. with that as no, a professional? Buddy, buddy we, I, we said we weren't going to talk about this. Oh, well, uh, we don't have to get into anything no, too but, hairy. I'm yeah, just saying that sometimes people yeah. miss their cues. They miss their lines. They miss their splash yeah. cues. And I John can't Cross tell you how many dolphins have missed the splash cue, and you yeah. got to recover. You got to get your foot in there so slyly and so stealthily that the audience doesn't notice you're kicking water at them. <laughs> Truly, and John Funny. Cross must remember that this is a now open door policy. Um, so we say everything. Right. We say every, but I think Melody's freaking out right now. I can no. see her gripping all sides of the table. So I, you know, stop me if I'm going too far. No, no this is fine. This is totally fine. I say fine. Geronimo. Okay, Sandy, yeah, go ahead. Tell us a story then. Tell us, tell us your experience. Well, I've never done anything wrong. Okay. And I've never ever had to reprimand a fish, or reprimand <laughs> anything. So that's why I'm saying I'm not scared of the open door policy. Because um, I'm just telling you that nothing has ever happened to me. Okay, well, what about that time that you gave the wrong up cue and the fish, 10,000 fish, jumped into the stands? How about that? Do you want to talk about that or no? I think you, John Cross, should address the time you took a dolphin and asked it to give you a ride home. And you put a dolphin in your Toyota Corolla. I was drunk. I needed somebody to drive me. I needed somebody to drive me. Okay? Hey, I'll back you on that. You gotta take a dolphin as a DD. They <laughs> understand the wheel. They understand the wheel. They'll never be able to prove it, but I know they got it. Okay, fine. I'll talk about my experience. <laughs> so, yes. One time I had to take an otter to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> I won't go farther than that. It was one of the darkest days of both of our lives. It was really hard. It was really hard. And I won't speak too much on that. 
<laughs> but things do go wrong. And I want to say the treatment that I have been given because I just had a couple of fish go into the audience. Meanwhile, Melody <laughs> brought a literal otter to a Planned Parenthood for an unexplainable reason is absolute batshit unfair. Now, this opens up a different question I have, which is, are there animal specific Planned Parenthoods? <laughs> no, there are not. No, they're not. Not in San so Diego. So somebody had to take a job that they weren't sure about. So America let's just, doesn't yeah. have the funds. I've got a lot of stares in the waiting room. People in the waiting room were already having one of the worst dates of their lives. And then they look at me and they're like, what are they doing with this otter who's sobbing in my hands? And then, of course, we went into the doctor. And that was a really, really specific situation. Again, I won't get into the details because that's not my story to tell. But, um, yeah, this, this, was a, this was a human doctor. Have you seen the, have you seen, <laughs> have you seen the TikTok, Melody, that's going viral of a girl following you? And no. an otter into a Planned Parenthood. <laughs> no. And she goes, you guys, I swear this person is a bringing an otter. To no, because we were, up, it was it was me and Skippy the otter. We were holding hands and I was, the otter was on, on hind legs and we were holding hands walking in. I think I actually did see this video. It was the only thing that has ever stopped the anti-abortion protesters from being crazy. <laughs> they all just stopped what they were doing. They put down their signs and said, you know what? That's actually really weird. And I don't know. <laughs> this one, I think will allow. Whatever this is, we're going to let it happen. <laughs> and I want to know, Melody, I'm just going to ask you. Did what? you ask one of John Cross's dolphins to drive the car for both of you to go to Planned Parenthood. Absolutely not. Those dolphins <laughs> would not would not have understood a single thing about what we were doing. And I didn't <laughs> want to have to deal with them. You are right about that. I would trust them <laughs> behind the wheel. I would not trust them to handle a delicate emotional situation. No, Those they guys, are brass. They... they are dogs. No, honestly, we call the area where Buddy swims with those old dolphins, we call that the locker room underwater. <laughs> we because do. it's just We disgusting. do. I say this is the locker room underwater. And the dolphins have a word for it. Uh, they call it the which translates oh. to the boys' house. Absolutely. And Crazy if the that censors... you call it the locker room underwater instead of the boys' house. <laughs> you it's have a different regional, nickname than then. <laughs> regional slang for both There's... parties. The yeah. translation is nearly the same. <laughs> oh, God, I wish you guys could understand that joke. I just remembered a different part of it. So the wife says to the priest, how do I know? How do I know that my husband's nose is this long? And then the priest hands her a magnifying glass and says, take this to your husband and ask him to use it. Oh my God, but I can't remember how that connects to the later <laughs> thing. God, you guys, this joke is so funny. I swear to God. I swear to God, I'm going to remember it. I'm not telling it right. I'm not doing it justice. No, well, I don't think you are. <laughs> well, uh, this has been fun, but Edgar is drying up and he's going to get mad at me. If, if <sighs> Yeah. Okay, um, Edgar, we're going to go soon. So so uh, I just want to say, please come check us out at San Diego. I'm there seven days a week for 24 hours a day. I live in the house that I'm fixing in the show. So you're going to have to come check it out. <laughs> and um, does anyone else have anything they want to say? you got to come support SeaWorld. We're having a lot of fun come over there. Out. And we'd we love are to see so you. so excited about down, our new guys. slate. Come on guys. down at uh, 2, 3, 20, and 5. Uh, me and the dolphins are hanging out. It's going to be a raucous time. Just a warning to the ladies, don't wear a skirt too short. Those <laughs> dolphins will slide up below and take a picture. They are dogs. And if you think a dolphin could drive a car, wait till you see a dolphin take a picture on an iPhone. Am I right? <laughs> That's right. Oh, right guys, please, guys, please come and see me and the fish jumping, jumping at 1220, 1225, and 1245. Yes, that's just that hour. And come see me at the Shamu Finally Apologizes show. We are listening, uh, still listening. Watch me get whipped by an old man throwing a fish at my, like a baseball, <laughs> about and 70 then, miles an hour. And then right when you're done getting your hot dogs and fun, fun yummy treats for Din Din, make sure before you leave to come see our night show, which is the five attachment styles and five love languages. That's right. Edgar, any final words? Oh! Oh, oh, let's do a Merry Christmas. Oh, let's do a Merry Christmas. Oh, let's do a Merry Christmas. 
9-11 was an inside job. This has been Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists answering the question. Now that's why they call it showbiz. Good night, SeaWorld. But we didn't talk about the unions. <laughs> and we want to give a thank you, a thank you, thank you to Abby Norton, who suggested SeaWorld trainers. If you want to suggest an episode topic, go to patreon.com slash pod, become a member, and you'll get access to that. And also our post-show bonus episodes. Good night, Hollywood. Good night. Up. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood roundtable podcast created, performed, and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Culhane, Angela Giarratana, and Patrick McDonald. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AOAOAOA are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Night Hollywood! <laughs>